We are host to the Excellence in Corporate Governance Awards annually. I therefore challenge the chartered governance and accountancy professionals to partner us in government. With the CIS qualification, it was quite a force to reckon with. If you talk of accounting, it's our institute and other institutes. We participated in a World Bank report. It's a very versatile qualification. And make sure you start that career that will catapult you into the world of commerce. Do accountants doing different things. Well done. Thank you. Because it's Kaleli Africa. The year 2021 is the golden jubilee year for the Chartered Governance and Accountancy Institute in Zimbabwe, previously known as the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators. The Institute was established in Zimbabwe on 1 January 1971 by means of the Chartered Secretaries Act. The year 2021 is also the year when the Institute rebranded from the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators in Zimbabwe to the Chartered Governance and Accountancy Institute in Zimbabwe. My name is Taona Munjandi. I am the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators in Zimbabwe president, running my second term, which has coincided with our 50th anniversary and rebranding. We have been training governance professionals and accountants in Zimbabwe since our inception in 1971. We have turned 50 years as of today, and this is the anniversary news that I bring to you, members, students, and stakeholders. We were founded as an act of parliament in Zimbabwe in 1971, and we fall under the Ministry of Justice, Legal, and Parliamentary Affairs in terms of our enactment. And as you would have known, recently we were the cabinet approved our objects of operation and also the name change in line with the CGI Global. We are part and parcel of the CGI Global, which has nine divisions and more than 40,000 members. Our vision is to become the professional body of choice in the development of leading practitioners in governance and accounting. A golden jubilee is something which uh, I think if you look back 50 years, it's a lot of time and a lot has happened. Uh, as an institute, we've got a huge impact on the, on the individuals, on the economy, on various sectors. And uh, collectively, or building up to the 50th anniversary, we have done a lot, we have introduced a lot. Uh, we are a force to reckon with in terms of accounting and governance. Uh, if you talk of accounting, it's our institute and other institutes. But if you talk of governance, we are the standout uh, institute in terms of governance. So 50 years to me, it's, uh, it's a celebratory moment. And, uh, and it came uh, with the rebranding because we now need to refocus, to reimagine, to take a new direction of what we are. It is well known for its Chartered Institute of Secretaries, CIS qualification, and for its expertise in corporate governance. So, how did this all begin? The Institute is part of a global institute, which was founded in the United Kingdom in October 1891 as the Institute of Secretaries to represent the interests of corporation secretaries who had emerged to govern the administration of joint stock companies. This followed the introduction of limited liability companies in 1855. A royal charter was granted to the institute in 1902, making it the Chartered Institute of Secretaries. In 1902, the Chartered Institute of Secretaries rebranded to include the charter. We were given a royal charter then, and it became the Chartered Institute of Secretaries. Again, it evolved because of the need to differentiate ourselves 
There was the administration bit that was added to the qualification and it was rebranded in 2004 to become the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, ICSA, Global, and hence ICSAs in Zimbabwe. In 1992, before 1994, the Zimbabwe division was, like I said, part of the South African, Southern Africa division, and that meant the examinations of the institute that were written in Zimbabwe were set and supervised by the Southern Africa division. This was up until 1994, when Zimbabwe was given the ability to run its own examinations, and uh, that started in 1994. In 1994, the Zimbabwe division, because it was now running its own examinations, now needed to come up with its own structures to be able to quality control the examination processes. That meant it now had to create uh, what was called then the Education uh, Committee, then the Education and Examinations Committee. These are the committees that would do appoint the examiners and supervise the work of the examiners and moderators and the, how the institute's um, education process was being done or carried out. Later on, they also then created, uh, we, the Institute also then created the assessment review panel, which was specifically created to look at the examination processes. That was after recognizing that there was need to separate the education and the examination assessment processes. So the assessment review panel was now the panel that would then go through to look at the examination uh, standards that were being um, written by the students in Zimbabwe. As you may appreciate, ICSA members or graduates of the Institute are employed at senior levels in the market. Some are CEOs, chief executive officers. Some of them are managing directors. Some of them are finance directors. Some human resources directors. Some marketing directors, etc. And organizations like Zimra, when we talk about government, and Auditor General's offices, they have been manned by CIS qualified people. And as we speak, Zimra is led by a chartered secretary. And uh, the Auditor General's office is being led by a chartered secretary. So the Institute has done a lot to help graduates to perform where they go been involved with the association for a number of years. In 2009 I was invited to be a member of the Marketing and Strategy uh, Committee and in 2010 I, I became the, a member of the um, Marketing and Strategy Commission and in 2011 I was invited onto Council of the Institute. In 2014 to 2015 was the year that I was the president of the Institute and during that period I attended um, two meetings of the um, Corporate Secretaries International Association. The first one as the treasurer of, of the association and in the second year I became president. Yeah, as a grandfather of the institution, I feel very proud to be associated with this happening. We will actually be there to support the institute. So I really say Makoro Koto, congratulations to the institute. And the recognition goes on and on. In 1909, a branch of the institute was established in South Africa, the first to be established outside the United Kingdom. In 1957, it became the Southern African Division of the Institute. The division included Zimbabwe. In 1970, the Chartered Institute of Secretaries merged with the Corporation of Secretaries, becoming the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators, ICSA for short. In January 1971, the Institute was established in Zimbabwe as a statutory body through an Act of Parliament, the Chartered Secretaries a Private Act. However, it still remained part of the South African-based Southern African Division. The Act prescribed the operations of the Institute in Zimbabwe. 
the status of its members and its relationship with the government and world at large. And with the qualification, it was easy to blend in with what I was doing. And that's why I feel that anybody who wants to have a, a career as a Chartered Secretary will do them a world of good because they will be able to do many, many things. I qualified as a Chartered Secretary in the year 2002, a year which started in 1998 when I was a clerical staff in some, some, somewhere down there in Kariba. The reason um, or the drive to do Chartered Secretary qualification was to do with uh, the, the fact that Chartered Secretary qualification was the preferred qualification because of its uh, uh, entry points, it didn't, it didn't actually exclude those who were coming from disadvantaged uh, 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 backgrounds. And, uh, and also the Chartered Sector Institution uh, or uh, education system is competence-based, not academic. Competence-based it, it, it deals with uh, training someone for skills which are immediately transferable to the employer. Uh, I qualified in uh, 2001 when I did my final examination, then graduated a year later. This qualification has been very has been handy for me uh, to the extent that it is without the recognition of this qualification, otherwise the board or the employer would not have even considered me for this role. Why the role is important is because its curriculum covers a wide range of areas. It covers issues of management, covers issues of accountability, covers issues of administration. Governance issues are also part of the curriculum that is provided by this qualification. The examination standards and the criteria for membership were and still are the same as those applied in the United Kingdom and elsewhere in the world where there is a division of the institute. The Chartered Secretary's CIS qualification has long been one of the most sought after qualifications in Zimbabwe, valued not only because of the wide range of subjects that have to be passed to attain it and the professionalism associated with it, but because it is recognized anywhere in the world where the institute exists. I qualified as a Chartered Secretary in 1989 and by those days one was supposed to major in certain fields and I was majoring in company secretarial and general accounting. Uh, came 20, uh, 2010 and 2011 I was the president of the institute and uh, that is the year I managed to travel abroad to sister countries, seeking synergies with our sister uh, institutes in, the, in those countries. And we managed to learn a lot towards accomplishment of our ethos as an institute. Uh, come to the 50th anniversary, uh, it's quite exciting uh, to be part of the anniversary where we see a migration from a, a chartered secretary into the governance and accountancy institute. Something which is very practical to the Zimbabwean side because uh, our professionals are mostly engaged in governance and accounting issues. This is a qualification of um, the ICSA qualification um, I, I find it very, very valuable in that it multi-skills you, especially, you know, giving you adequate skills to deal with emerging developments in business, especially now when we have a changing environment. As a company secretary, you are prepared to work in the boardroom in, a, in an advisory role. You are also prepared to lead an organization because you are given the various skills that you require in accounting, administration, and General Management. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Pan-African Federation of Accountants. The Institute is a valued member of PAFA. At PAFA our mission is to strengthen the accountancy profession and the voice of the accountancy profession in Africa. And working with the Institute I have seen 
first-hand evidence of how the accountancy profession in a country such as Zimbabwe can champion change and really can commend the Institute for their work. Being a member of PAFA means that they contribute to stronger professional accountancy organizations in Africa and they are also part of Africa's voice in international platforms. Turning 50 is an amazing milestone. I can see it in the Institute, I can see it in their achievements over the past 50 years. I am forever grateful that they opened their doors for professional accountants and I wish them the best for the next 50 years as they are going to move their members from accountants doing the same things to accountants doing the same things differently to accountants doing different things. Well done, thank you. The CS qualification has been uh, very useful in that it opened a lot of doors for me. Having qualified in 1992, I realized by 1995, I then got a senior position in one of the uh, pension funds. And uh, I never looked back. Uh, from that three years after qualification uh, was now uh, second in charge uh, which then means that the set of skills I had acquired through the qualification of the institute uh, built a lot of confidence in me and brought in a lot of versatility uh, in me and uh, now having operated of the 29 years I've been a member of the Institute, 26 of those I've been operating at senior management level. I started working for the Institute in 1991 as a clerk in the examination department. Later on I was promoted to be the members registrar. Uh, through my time I've gone through or I have participated in many um, graduation ceremonies and I saw Mrs. Chiri, the Auditor General graduate. I also saw Mr. Alex Membere graduate. My name is Fungai Manika. I joined the Institute, uh, it was in 1994. Also this year, I, this is my 26th year with the Institute. I'm very happy working for the Institute. Akatanga Basa Panaba, 19. 96. Nakat we say my governor, the Institute in Zimbabwe was granted autonomy as a fully fledged division of the International Institute. Today, in addition to the Zimbabwe Division and South African-based Southern African Division, there are divisions in Australia, Canada, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. The Institute in the United Kingdom and Ireland is now considered a division of the Institutes representing and supporting members in the United Kingdom, Ireland, United Kingdom dependencies and associated territories as well as members in any other country which does not fall under any of the other eight divisions. The nine divisions, including the Zimbabwe division, are all represented on the Institute's International or Global Council. In 1980, the Institute in Zimbabwe established the Foundation for Business Studies to bring practical business education within the reach of those who did not yet qualify academically for the Institute's qualifying course. In 1971, we were still in a world situation. We got our independence in 1980. There was need for us to capacitate and make sure that the players that are employed and actors in the economy are professionalized. And this is where the Institute came in and 
qualified CIS members and most of the depart government departments as well as private, you'll find a CIS member in qualified to run some of those departments. When I qualified in 1991, I was on the first level of management uh, as a deputy, manage, a deputy director. Uh, then subsequently, I moved up and I was being propelled by this uh, qualification. I had my basic uh, degree, accounting degree, from the University of Zimbabwe, but now added on to that with the CIS qualification, it was quite a force to reckon with. And uh, I quickly moved up the ladder. And uh, I'm sure this is, these are the qualifications that were looked at when I eventually was appointed to be Auditor General. Uh, the CIS qualification has been a strong qualification. It was actually the in-thing qualification during our times. The foundation's name was changed in 2007 to the Institute of Business and Accounting Studies, IBAS. IBAS offers a certificate, diploma and higher diploma. The IBAS diploma and higher diploma are stand-alone qualifications. Those who obtain the certificate can be enrolled for the CIS course or proceed to study for the diploma course, which equips them for mid-level accounting and administration positions. The higher diploma can be used for tasks up to or past the level of an assistant accountant, audit technician, or junior managerial and administrative officer. It is equivalent to Part B of the ICSAZ qualifying scheme and can be used to apply for exemption from that part of the course by those who wish to pursue it. So our members and students are, have got expertise in governance and accountants and uphold international best practices and ethical standards that has contributed in both public and private sector businesses as well as in the economy. I enrolled for this program in 20, 2011 after I completed my studies about in 2008. Uh, uh, yes, the Institute, when we were still young, we were admiring people who have qualified, the like of Dr. Gono, the like of... There are a lot of people who have been, uh, who have been achieving milestone using this course. In 2019, the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators changed its name to the Chartered Governance Institute to reflect the broadening of the professional support it provides to those in governance roles. The global body is now known as the Chartered Governance Institute Global. The rebranding also came with a new logo reflecting the name change. The qualifying course for the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators in Zimbabwe differed from that of most other divisions in that it offered training not only in governance and administration, but in accountancy. Those who obtained the Chartered Secretary qualification were and are eligible to register through the Institute as public accountants with the country's Public Accountants and Auditors Board. It joined the board in 1996. As chairman of the PAAB, which is the regulator of the accounting and auditing profession in Zimbabwe, we achieved quite a number of milestones. The first one was we participated in a World Bank report on standards and capacity in brackets ROSC, which was a survey regarding the quality and standards of education in that sector uh, in Zimbabwe. And arising from that survey, we secured as PAB through the World Bank teaching materials for all universities offering accounting degrees or a degree programs in Zimbabwe, while a special CPD uh, for the lecturers was arranged uh, at MSU. We also embarked on a capacity building of the Parliamentary Public Accounts Committee in 2010. This was in collaboration with the Southern African Parliamentary Support Trust and the first workshop was held in Kadoma and these have been going ever since then. 
I am the Secretary of the Public Accountants and Auditors Board in Zimbabwe. Uh, the Public Accountants and Auditors Board is the regulator and oversight body for the accountancy profession in the country. We are responsible for defining and enforcing ethical practice among registered persons. We are responsible for prescribing accounting and auditing standards uh, for use in Zimbabwe. We are also charged with the statutory mandate to monitor the compliance um, with applicable standards by registered account, uh, accountancy professionals in the country. We work with government ministries, departments and public sector entities in many ways in line with our mission to sustainably promote and advance the efficient administration of industry, commerce and the public sector using modern technology. Testament to this is our relationship with the Zimbabwe Republic Police in the area of forensic accounting. We recently signed an MOU to provide training to members of the police force in forensic accounting. We also have signed a memorandum of understanding with universities to provide versatility in our qualifications to our members. Recently, we signed an MOU with the Harare Institute of Technology to collaborate in the area of forensic accounting, auditing, and cyber security. We are proud to offer diversity in our qualification to produce experts who can adopt to the changing business environment. In this light, we have introduced diplomas in governance, risk, and compliance. The GRC diplomas are aimed at providing governance, risk and compliance knowledge and skills to practitioners in all industry and sectors of the economy. The first of such GRC diplomas is the one we launched recently where we collaborated with the Deposit Protection Corporation of Zimbabwe and the International Compliance Association from the UK. I therefore invite you all to partner with our new brand, Chartered Governance and Accountants Institute in Zimbabwe, the home to professional governance and accountants. In November 2020, it became an associate member of the International Federation of Accountants, IFAC. In view of the accountancy training it offers and its membership of IFAC, the Institute in Zimbabwe decided to include accountancy in its name when it rebranded in 2021, in line with the rebranding of the Global Institute and introduced specialization in either governance, risk and compliance, or accountancy in its qualifying scheme. It is therefore rebranded as the Chartered Governance and Accountancy Institute in Zimbabwe. It is quite interesting that um, the rebranding of the institute, the local institute, is coming at a very opportune time when uh, we, we actually are celebrating our 50th anniversary as an institute. Uh, this is also following uh, the rebranding that happened at International about uh, the last two years. International was known as ICSA International, Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators International. It has now rebranded to be uh, the Chartered uh, Governance Institute through a, char a charter that was actually uh, approved by, by Her Majesty the Queen in 2019. The rebranding is a culmination of work that was done I think for the, in the past decade, it's actually a, a very long time, which resulted, which was a recognition that the economies that were being saved by the chartered secretaries were evolving or were changing. 
So the institute, both at national and international level, recognized the need to adapt the institute or upgrade the institute so that it better meets the requirements of the day. Which is the reason why, after all that painstaking work over the years, the institute uh, internationally decided that they wanted to position the institute centrally as a governance body, which does a lot of other things, which uh, include things like company secretaryship, accounting, administration, and so on. All these things feed into the corporate governance structure. And then, what it then did, it is after recognizing that, it then created streams to meet the, the various requirements in terms of corporate governance, in terms of the specializations that are required in various divisions. So the institute created basically two streams, um, a corporate governance stream and a risk management stream and or an accounting stream for a country like Zimbabwe. This is mainly to deal with the issue that uh, prevails in Zimbabwe where the Chartered Secretary in Zimbabwe is more of an accounting player than elsewhere. But we still also have Chartered Secretaries in Zimbabwe who are doing the Corporate Secretary traditional work that is normally done by Chartered Secretary. So we needed to recognize that and that's when the two streams came through and then also the need to change the name to better meet those requirements. From that perspective, this new name was created. And it is that, that new name that has created the rebranding that we are now talking about. We are members. It is our institute. And when we see it doing a good thing like the rebranding that is taking place, we really feel good because it's promoting us it's advertising us, it's putting us on the market where we are supposed to, because on the practical ground, we are the people. I'd like to offer some perspectives on the local and international standing of the Chartered Governance and Accountancy Institute of Zimbabwe. At the local level, the Institute uh, in Zimbabwe has a, a very long and a very proud 50 year history now of helping to improve the skills of the workforce in Zimbabwe. The Institute is in fact the professional home of governance practitioners with a high level of competence in business administration, general management, accountancy, company secretaryship, taxation and corporate governance with many of the Institute's members occupying very senior positions in both the private and public sectors of the economy. Importantly, the Zimbabwe Division also plays a vital role in the business community, in particular by helping to fight crime and corruption through teaching and advocating the internationally recognised principles and practices of good governance. This is really vital work. International experience shows us that if people have access to the necessary skills, knowledge and training, improving governance standards and outcomes becomes that much more achievable for the benefit of society as a whole. I'd like to just touch on some uh, very pertinent, I think, recent examples of where the Zimbabwe Division skills and training work have, have been uh, uh, put, put into practice in this regard. The first being the signing of a memorandum of understanding with the Zimbabwe Republic Police for the provision of training in various areas, including governance and accounting. And secondly, another recent contract uh, to work with the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission to assist them to increase the professional skills of their workforce. These and similar achievements are all very important steps to improve the underlying fabric of governance and business standards. At the international level, the Zimbabwe Division is an important member of the Global Chartered Governance Institute, which has in fact nine divisions around the world. Its membership numbers now over 38,000 members, and, and, and those members are similar to the members in the Zimbabwe Division. 
Over and above that formal membership base, we have tens of thousands of additional followers who who, uh, who are on with, uh, with us on the governance journey through uh, social media and, and other, uh, other uh, thought leadership channels. And uh, the Zimbabwe division is very much part of this international family. Uh, the, the, the whole point of an international family is to interact with each other, to share knowledge, to share learnings, and to not make the same mistakes that others may have made in the past, to, to learn from each other, and in effect, to make sure the whole is greater than the, the sum of the parts. Uh, the Zimbabwe division, through its international uh, uh, role with the Chartered Governance Institute, uh, is, is in a position to access a, a great range of intellectual property, which includes internationally developed training programs, best practice guides, and formal qualifying programs for governance practitioners. These are all of an international standard and focus on governance goals and the current best practice across the world. Greetings from the Chartered Governance Institute of Southern Africa. We wish you all the best on your Golden Jubilee. It's been a, an important 50 years. As many of you will know, Zimbabwe was part of the Southern African Division until 1991 when it became a division in its own right. And over the years, we've always had close bonds and we hope to continue to strengthen those bonds. We know many of your students and members have come to live and work in South Africa and we've always welcomed them with open arms. They are important members of our institute here in South Africa. Um, and uh, we wish you all the best for the future. I'd like to end off with uh, words of our national anthem and Kosi Sikaleli Africa, God bless Africa and guide her people. Thank you. Those who specialize in governance, risk and compliance use the initials CGP, standing for Chartered Governance Professional after their name. While those who specialize in accountancy use the initials CGPA, standing for Chartered Governance Professional Accountant. In addition to its corporate governance professional qualification tuition for which is offered at various colleges, the institute runs two other training programs, namely the Diploma in Forensic Accounting program, which it introduced in 2017, and the Public Sector Accounting program, which it launched in 2019. ICSAS, which is now CGI Zimbabwe, was one of the two professional accountancy organizations that were selected to run pilot schemes of this public sector professional accountancy program. And the ICSAS program was actually formally launched in April 2019 by the Minister of Finance and Economic Development. So the, this, the professionalization of the public sector accountancy is therefore a project which is still underway right now as we speak. Of course, uh, being a public sector issue, it brings into account the Public Service Commission. Uh, so uh, they've come on board uh, and uh, we really look forward to a time when uh, the accounting in the public sector will move to what is called accrual-based accounting so that you look at the total picture of government expenditure, not just of what has been paid for, which is the current accounting system on a cash Basis. When I joined in 2019, uh, I joined on the 14th of uh, January. Um, on the 24th um, of January, we then launched the uh, Diploma in Forensic Accounting with the police. Uh, on the 1st of April, we also launched the Public Sector uh, Accelerated Route Qualification that um, seeks to professionalize senior servants uh, in government. Um, it was a program that was run by IFAG, FID, um, as well as uh, PAAB. In 2013, it introduced the Excellence in Corporate Governance Awards, which take place annually to encourage excellence in corporate governance. 
The awards have expanded from initially covering only listed companies to encompassing awards for banking institutions and for state enterprises and parastatals. We are host to the Excellence in Corporate Governance Awards annually. We also promote good governance in all sectors of our economy through our capacity building where we actually graduate champions of governance and with a chartered status. I am uh, in the part of the corporate governance panel and uh, within that panel I chair the adjudication committee for the excellence in corporate governance awards. Um, these awards are the most prestigious awards, uh, corporate governance awards in Zimbabwe and um, our aim as an institute was to make sure that we make a huge contribution in terms of improving corporate governance uh, both in the private and in the uh, public sector. The ECG awards were introduced in 2013 and this was in partnership with the Securities and Exchange Commission as well as with the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. And the inaugural awards in 2013 had categories for Zimbabwe Stock Exchange listed companies only. Then in 2014, the categories for the banking institutions were introduced and this was done in partnership with the regulator for that sector, which is the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. I sit, I sit in a number of committees, the, um, Legislation and Technical Committee, uh, the Membership Committee, which I also chaired, and also the, which is on the main agenda of the Institute, the um, Corporate Governance Awards, and I became the chair of that Corporate Governance Awards. Whilst I was the chair of the Corporate Governance Awards, I managed to bring in Marvin King, which uh, people thought it's, it's, it's really a hard task, but we managed to bring him in, in, in and did a presentation at Etawa Awards, which marks the calendar of the, of the Institute. It also has a Chartered Secretary of the Year Award, which is presented at a formal banquet at the end of the Institute's annual conference, which is held each year in the scenic settings of either Victoria Falls or Nyanga. The Institute elects a new council at its annual general meeting. It has branches in Harare, Bulawayo, Mutare, Midlands, and Mashingo. I lead the Mutare branch, and um, the, the, the branch committee is involved in uh, organizing activities for members and also marketing uh, the, the Institute to the generality of the um, students in Manikaland so that as they uh, pursue their studies, they will also uh, uh, prioritize the institute. Uh, I am the leader of the, the, the branch committee, yes, and uh, it is our responsibility to arrange branch meetings. So we also arrange uh, uh, CBDs, which is Continuous Professional Development uh, programs for our members at the branch, so we invite uh, speakers from industry and commerce, from the academia, etc, etc. So we try to find challenges that people are meeting in industry and then we invite specific people to come and give uh, speeches on those particular uh, challenges. Being an institute, we want to ensure that our standards, our professional standards are met. So being the branch committee chairperson and with the branch committee. We are also involved in terms of monitoring exams. Our team also attend and see how the invigilations are going on. I'm the current branch chairman for the Blawayo chapter. Uh, as a chapter, we organize meetings for the executive at provincial level and we also organize some workshops, CPDs, that is continuing professional development for members. We invite speakers 
uh, working together with the Secretariat for the Institute. We also represent the Institute at provincial level whenever we are invited to. My CIS was full time in the UK at Hull College. That's where I started my CIS and completed it. I was awarded uh, associateship in 1980. I was the first black woman to attain fellowship of the institute in 1986. I want to also say that, uh, you know, it was a privilege for me to attend this uh, fellowship. I am pleased to be officiating at this event as you, the members of the Chartered uh, Governance and Accountants Institute of Zimbabwe, celebrate your 50th anniversary and uh, mark the 130th anniversary of the Global Chartered Governance Institute. The theme of this year's conference and a court, reset, reignite, rejuvenate, reinvigorate towards Vision 2030, governance and accounting. Uh, professionals are challenged. It is equally a jubilant occasion following the renaming of the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators to the Chartered Governance and Accountants Institute in Zimbabwe. The administration of the Institute as an associate member of the International Federation of Accountants is also a milestone worth celebrating. The development has resulted in the expansion of your mandate to now encompass both corporate governance and accountancy. I therefore challenge you to effectively play your professional role and provide strategic oversight within your sector, respective organizations and the nation as a whole, as we all accelerate national economic development in our beloved country, Zimbabwe. This is imperative more so that this 2021 Corporate Governance and Accountants Institute's annual conference comes at a time when Zimbabwe is enjoying brighter socioeconomic prospects. These are a result of the positive and the far-reaching impacts of my government's multi-pronged reforms across all sectors, leading to the stabilization of our economy. Notwithstanding the domestic and the global challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are registering successes under that kind of environment. This has culminated in the reorganization of supply chains, setting up of remote operations and implementation of bold financial decisions, among other actions. Some decisions may be painful, but if they are correct, the pain should be undertaken. The governance and accounting professionals are urged to ensure sustainable development, increase the production and productivity, efficient use of resources, and ultimately durable economic growth and prosperity. I want to repeat the aspect of efficient use of resources. This is where your skills and expertise and competencies come 
to assist this country to develop, this country to use its resources properly, efficiently, that this country will have value for its money, that this country should not waste resources. With the people with the skills which you have, the pace of development in this country will be increased. We need to develop a new culture where each one of us and in particular yourselves in this profession, you should be remembered when you are dead for having been patriotic by pointing out the weaknesses of government and the private government. <laughs> Not to be remembered for advising how to hide corruption because you are experts in accounting. The new culture and work ethic of the Second Republic must give impetus to the governance and the accounting professionals to build back better for more resilient companies and institutions. Our national determination and the culture of adaptability to date is a demonstration that in unity, peace and harmony, we can achieve seemingly impossible development targets. And to achieve that, I'm now convinced that we in the public sector must embrace the competencies and expertise which you people have in order that the resources of the nation which are at our disposal are properly utilized. Going forward, as a profession, you are challenged to expand your horizons and they take up the weighty responsibility of consolidating on the gains we have so far achieved, always informed by national interest rather than company or individual interest. Distinguished delegates, some of the hallmarks of my administration include entrenching democracy and constitutionalism, as well as upholding the rule of law, transparency, and accountability, and the fighting corruption. Emphasis should be on moving forward with clarity and the continued relevance in ever-changing national and global realities of our times. Through focusing on efficiency, flexibility, agility, but proper agility. Agility and the building resilience, you can also play your part in ensuring that Zimbabwe does not experience COVID-19 induced economic growth slippages. Let us all play our part in maintaining the upward economic growth and trajectory which we're experiencing. Meanwhile, I commend the Chartered Governance and Accountants Institute in Zimbabwe for taking bold steps and embarking on public sector accountancy capacity building programs. These efforts are appreciated and include the ongoing working memoranda with the Zimbabwe Republic Police to train their officials and those from the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission in forensic accounting, auditing, and the cyber security. Such collaboration will go a long way to strengthen our public institutions to efficiently and effectively deliver on our respective mandates. For some reason, I had forgotten how important you were since 1996. But from today, my attention and the eyes are now on you. <laughs> there should be robust cooperation 
between you and the public setup and government. You should be able to tell us what legislation, what laws we should make to create your environment safe and be promotive of efficiency, accountability, and transparency. The fight against corruption and the promotion of good corporate governance also augments efforts of my administration towards enhancing the doing of the doing business environment. We stand committed to maintaining a track record of credible policy implementation. My government is determined to apply the corporate governance principles enshrined in these and other legal instruments in all our public sector entities to enable them to be viable, efficient, and to positively contribute to our economic development. We must have the competencies which I now know you people have. Contribute to advising us as to the quality of expertise needed to do a particular job. I therefore challenge the chartered governance and accountancy professionals to partner us in government as catalysts and to help boards of public entities to adopt and implement good corporate governance principles. You should demonstrate your role as trusted advisors by also playing, ensuring the success of our National Development Strategy 1 and the devolution and the centralization agenda, which is designed not to leave anyone behind or any place behind. Your unique position enables you to make a positive contribution to our economic development at all levels of our gov governance architecture. I want to conclude by once again wishing you a happy 50th anniversary and encourage you to redouble your participation in our economic development. And now, with these remarks, it is now my privilege and honor to declare the 2021 Annual Conference of the Chartered Governance and Accountants Institute of Zimbabwe officially opened. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. We are now the Chartered Governance and Accountants Institute in Zimbabwe formerly known as the Chartered, uh, the Chartered Institute of Secretaries and Administrators in Zimbabwe. As you would have seen, our logos have changed. We are predominantly blue in color, and the big G represents the governance arena that we are championing. And like we said uh, in our uh, preview, uh, that the Institute of uh, Governance and Accountants in Zimbabwe is the only institute that has got chartered status in governance as a royal charter of the UK. And being part of the global family, we've got the local presence, but with the global reach. Our members can now qualify as chartered governance professionals. They can now qualify as chartered governance professional accountants. And just being part and parcel of PAFA and IFAC, as well as PAAB, you have a fully-fledged accountant in your own respect who can operate in anywhere in the, every part of the world. We are challenging you that as we start the next 50 years, the professionals that are qualifying now, you have got the button. You have heard from legends like Mrs. Chela, who sits on various boards. You have heard from legends like Rick Summers. You have heard from legends even from the previous CEO on how the institute has transferred or transcends, we are challenging you now to take the institute into the next 50. And I'm sure that by the time you are celebrating your centenary, you will remember 
that there were people that put this foundation and you need to guard the reputation of the institute in good stead. The institute represents good corporate governance institution. It represents integrity, it represents transparency, it represents accountability. And we are saying, take what you have learned, take the competencies and skills back into commerce, back into corporates, in the public sector, to make sure that you influence transparency, you influence accountability, you bring in integrity within the organizations that you work. Above all, to contribute meaningfully to the development of the economy and work with the government, work with private sector in terms of making sure that you capacitate the workforce uh, in Zimbabwe so that all the blueprints that are coming out are actually attained and the goals are achieved. And as we speak right now, we are moving towards Vision 2030, an upper middle income economy by 2030, and ours is a very vital, vital cog in the development and achievement of those goals as enunciated by our president. As I part ways with you, I am encouraging each one of you to take note that the Institute has changed. We are now going to concentrate on the two pathways. So CPDs in terms of continuous professional developments, those that are in the accounting and auditing field, you will receive your specialized professional, continuous professional development uh, workshops and training in that area. Please get in touch with the Institute and get to know what is in store for you. As for the chartered governance professionals who are predominantly company secretaries, risk managers, compliance officers, etc., etc., please again take note that your continuous professional development has been tailor made to make sure that you keep abreast with the international trends and events that are happening around in terms of governance. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have other courses within the Institute. The Governance, Risk and Compliance course is one. And we also have the DIFA, which is the Diploma in Forensic Accounting, that is also uh, on offer. And also we have IBAS, your International uh, your Institute of Business and Accounting Studies, that you can get all the information that you'd want and the training for, of being a technician in terms of accounting. So as we speak right now, the Institute is open, the courses are being offered, we are enrolling and making sure that all the government departments with the public sector, central government, local government, private sector, are actually can actually access us at Zidzo House, Corner Nelson Mandela Avenue, as well as uh, E.D. Munangagwa uh, Road, there in Eastley. Come, talk to us, talk to us via the phone, contact us on social media, give, uh, give us a call today, and make sure you start that career that will catapult you into the world of commerce and, uh, and, and industry with success. I thank you.